So understand this, the daughter shall prophesy and tell what is to come, and your young men shall see visions. That means, praise God, that God calls the young men to run with the vision because the old men see the dreams. And it's our job to say, here's the dream. God want to put together a building that 300 people can come in and learn about catechism, learn about how to live right, how to serve God, and how to love their spouse and love their children right. Hear me, we want to do it. It is the young men's job, amen, to see the vision and run with it. Praise God. Watch this. Watch this. So God says, amen, praise God, that young is tied to vision, old is tied to dreams. Well, Pastor, I'm young. I have dreams. Okay, yes, yes, yes. But understand, here lies the problem with that. Amen, praise God, that when you're young, amen, praise God, you have strength. God requires for you, amen, to make someone else's vision come to pass in order for your dream to come to pass. Amen. And this is where most folk missing it at. If you're not willing to help someone else's dream come to pass, then your vision can't come to pass. You only become who you are by lifting someone someone else up and be faithful over the few God bless you with so God can make you ruler over much that he's given in your hands so this is why praise God God don't give most young men in their 20s 8 million dollars because they lose their mind most of them do Lose their mind. They go buy 10 cars. They go and run, just run women. They just do whatever, amen, praise God, they want to do because they're young and they're foolish at that age. You give that same kind of money to an older man, 60-year-old, he's like, no, nah, I ain't about to try to do no drugs all night, stand up eating cake. <laughs> older man be like, what, 8 million? Shh, I'm 55. No, ain't nobody doing all that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Let's, let's, talk, let's set my investments up, my Roth IRA, my retirement fund. I mean, I, I'm looking at the future now. I mean, I praise God. I, I only got about 50 more years. I ain't got time to play around. Let me set myself up. Did I, did I pay my house off? Hear me, that a real person going to come up with real things. Amen. A young 20-year-old ain't going to think about, let me go buy and pay off a house. They ain't thinking about that. Let me go buy me $8 million. Let me go buy me two Bentleys. It's a different mindset. That's why God don't give a lot of dreams to young men. He give dreams, amen, praise God, to someone that has already supported someone's vision. And he gives vision to young men to hear me, to learn how to build a dream. So understand this. Your vision will come to pass when you're faithful over someone else's vision. Mm, that's how it works. Praise God, because understand this, no young man has joined the, the armed services at 18 years old and went in there and told everybody what to do. Never in history. I don't care if he's a genius. He's got the highest IQ. They go like, hit the ground, give me 50 push-ups. Because you're not hearing me at your age, amen, does not justify you coming in and telling us what, what kind of experience. You ain't never been on the battlefield. You ain't got the experiences to tell nobody nothing yet. You can be a brilliant, but I'm smarter than you. Okay, yeah, you're smarter than the chief, chief captain. You're smarter than the lieutenant. You're smarter than those at high, high rankings. But they got something over you called experience. Hear me understand this. And experience, amen, praise God, pays the bill every time. Amen. amen, praise God. So this is why, hear me, young folk, don't despise me, y'all. Thank God for the strength you have. Amen, praise God, because when God puts you around someone that has a dream, that is visionary, God's going to give you a vision by being around some, someone that has a vision. Hear me, that's why you want to get around folk that's doing something, because they're doing something will make you do something. Their, hear me, their excitement will make you excited. Their vision, hear me, board, will make you say, I need to put some on my vision board. Hear me, that's why you get around someone that's got vision that got aspirations not oh what you doing nothing okay nothing spell that nothing i in nothing you're doing nothing okay praise god well you well you you're not from the same factory i'm from i'm from a dream factory i need to get up and do something you're 19 years old 20 years old you're going to college what you doing now i'm just working a job what are you doing why are you here you just living every day. I'm just living, just eating and going to the bathroom. What else you doing? Seriously, see, that, that's what life is about. Is you going to work, come home, eat, lay down, go and re rinse and repeat. Do it again tomorrow. Why are you here? So I've always thought that even as a young man, praise God, it's like that there's got to be a reason more than just getting up, going to school, going to work, come home, and then do it again. 
And then do it again. Because there's got to be something different between us that's living and those folk that's laying in the cemetery. It's got to be a reason, something different, because they're existing on earth. Their body, their bones are laying there. So they're existing. But what is our existence down here other than just get up, work, and to go pay bills? I mean, anyone ever asked God that? Like, okay, is that what life is this all about? I'm just working to pay a cell phone bill? Okay, hey man, then go on vacation every so often, act like I got it going on, only come back and go, dang, now I got to go work to pay more bills. You should have a vision, something that drives you, that takes you further than what, hear me, the enemy has, has led, amen, and told you. It should be something, you say, I'm called to something greater than just work. And that's a dream. A dream, a dream will put you, amen, hear me, at odds with people that are not doing anything. They'll have a problem with you, amen, because you're getting up every morning driving to a dream. You have a drive in you. You have a passion in you to go further and to do more than just sit there or just work on that job. Watch this. So you got to notice, amen, praise God. Understand this God's spirit in this particular verse of scripture passage of text says that nothing, amen, praise God, nothing happened. Praise God. Hear me say, I will do nothing. Look at what he says in verse number 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall receive, shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Notice here that nothing, praise God, happened until he poured out his spirit. So without God's power pouring, without him pouring onto you the anointing, pouring onto you the vision, pouring onto you the dreams, your dream don't come to pass unless, unless he does it. Uh, amen. That's why I don't understand who wouldn't serve a God like this. He makes what, you, what he put in you, amen, come to pass. And then all of a sudden, folks show up, amen, at that job. For all of a sudden, folks call you, amen, and how you come do the nail. You open up the building hoping that they come. The next thing you know, they come. I don't even know you, but hear me, I need you to do this for me. Because you had a vision and a dream to see it come to pass. Watch this. That's powerful. It's powerful because you move like God when you dream. It says, once you learn to use your imagination, God begins to turn things around. Let me say that one more time. Once you learn to use your imagination, God begins to turn things around. But it's, it's about you using, see, and understand some of us, amen, in here, understand the premise of what I'm talking about. You understand that I got to use my imagination. I, I, I cannot, praise God, hear me, just sit around and believe that what I'm seeing is all there is to me. Because if you got the Holy Ghost, it should be something on the inside of your belly that when you pray, amen, that greatness shows up in the room when you call on that name, amen, praise God. And when you call that name, amen, praise God, there's power, amen, there's glory, amen. You know the song, when I call your name, amen, praise God, you know what, amen, God starts showing up when you call that name. I call that name, stuff start happening, visions start showing up, dreams starts coming to pass, my imagination lights up, and all of a sudden I start thinking bigger and better than what I'm going through right now. Something good is about to come into your life. Hallelujah. Why, Pastor? Because you dare to dream big. Hear me, understand this. You got to understand that God wants you to dream big. You got to dare. You got to dare to dream it. Hear me, understand this. That back in 1995, when I joined the ministry, I was married to my wife about six months. Praise God. And my pastor gave me the keys to his car and said, Go on and park it. I said, Now, now pray the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm like, well, okay, sir. I mean, it was an S550 Mercedes. And, and then back then, we called that one the big body. That was the big body beans. And, and he said, go on the park it. And I'm like, go on the park it? And I said, like, by myself? He said, yeah, by yourself. Go on and park the car, boy. And he walked on into church. And I'm like, okay, I'm left in it. And I, I get it in all scared because the only thing that the devil was trying to show my imagination was the brick columns that was on each side that you're going to go, shh. Sh I was like, the devil is a liar. So I never forget, I got in that car, started it up, and I was like, ooh, I said, this is what it feel like. Steering wheel moved, amen. All my cars didn't have moving steering wheels. 
See, now they got them in every model. Amen. Praise God. You can go and get a Festiva and the steering wheel will move now. Amen. Praise God. It'll move down and move to you. Amen. Automatically. This, it, it, they had that. That was back then. Seat move and steering wheel move. So when you started up to your settings. So I was like, man, this is nice. Mirrors moved. Everything automatic when you, soon as you started up. Hear me, and, I, and I went about maybe about a mile an hour. I was just, I mean, it took me almost 10 minutes to park the car. It should have been took about a minute and a half. 30 seconds just to go, rrr, 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 back it up. It took me about 10 minutes. I was like, mm, mm, mm. And, him, and then folk walking by, coming into church. Uh, ooh, Pastor Harris. At that time, it was Minister Harris. Minister Harris, you look good in that. I said, well, praise the Lord. I couldn't even phantom it. Little boy from the east side. I mean, S550. I was like, what? If, if I did do this, amen, praise God. Only person I seen, amen, with it was certain individuals in the neighborhood. Here, man, and many of them need you know, ended up dead or in jail. So to get this honestly, I'm like, well, what the world I'm gonna do to get? I said, no, it's for my pastor, but praise the Lord. But he taught me to dare to dream big. <laughs> Hear me to dream. Praise God. Here keys. Here keys. Here, man. So then a year later, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We 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 begin to now operate in dreaming bigger. Amen. Praise God. He calls me up and tells me after service one day, Richard, come here for me. I said, yes, sir. He said, I need you to come over to the house today. You're going to take a ride with me. We're going down. Amen. Praise God. To somewhere I need to run. I said, yes, sir. Get out to his house. Praise God. He said, yeah, make sure you look nice, son. I said, yes, sir. I uh, mean, I got, got to the house. He threw me the keys. Talking about, you're going to be on our driver tonight. And at that time, he had a Bentley. I'm driving. I'm, tw I'm, I'm early 20s. Driving a Bentley. I'm like, Lord, if I get in an accident with this car, what y'all don't realize, the paint job on that car is like $13,000. You scratch the door. I mean, ain't nothing on it. Oh, you just fix a $700. You fix $2,700. Like, y'all cars. No, everything on the car, the car is a $180,000 car. You hit it. Amen. Praise God. You your damages are always in the thirty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 range. I wasn't making that in a whole year. I'm like, God, he trusted me with this car, Lord God. And he jumped in the back, open the door, he gets to the back. I get that front, hey amen, hear me. All while I'm driving, I'm knuckling, I'm, I'm white knuckling, what they call in that steering wheel. I got it so tight, hallelujah, hey amen, there ain't nothing going to happen. In my watch, hey amen, praise the Lord. What's he? Some of y'all would have just been leaning back. I got this, oh, this is what I've been looking and live for. Oh, you've been pulling it up, backing it up. Hey amen, oh, I got this. No, no, no. See, understand this. I learned to take care of what God has put in my hands, and I treated it just like God. I didn't allow the enemy, praise God, to get any area of pride in me while I'm driving somebody else's car. I don't know, I ain't, no, I ain't giving no room for the devil. See, some of y'all give room for the enemy. Praise God, hear me. Some of y'all hear me. God gives you something, amen, praise God, and they give you an inch. You take a mile. You take a whole 10, 15, 20 minutes to do something. Praise God. If somebody, amen, praise God, bless you to do something, don't take advantage of them. Praise God. Can you go take my car and get some gas? All of a sudden now, you taking a long route, amen, trying to see how fast it can go. Hear me, you'll never get that opportunity again when you disrespect people's stuff. When folk loan you something, take care of it bring it back better than how they gave it to you talking about dreams down here huh? praise god hear me you gotta understand you can't take what people give you and break it they may say oh man no, i ain't giving you my stuff no more every time you you take my coat or you borrow something i gotta dang where this big old scratch come from and i ripped in the back and praise god he hits your coat back and then they're gonna hide it so that way they can just hang it up so you don't you don't notice it how many of y'all ever seen that before? Amen. Like them screen doors. Amen. Praise God. Hit me. Somebody break the screen and they put it back up like they didn't do it. Wait for the next person. And they, they do it. They're like, oh, I'm like, oops. Amen. This video's all about that. People setting up stuff and hit me like they didn't break it. Take the lamp, set it all up like they didn't break it. Amen. Next person pull on it, falls to pieces. Hear me, there's some whoopers in my house happening for people doing that. Amen. Praise God trying to put stuff up and try to hide it. The dreams, however God gives you a dream, you got to take care of that dream. Amen. Praise God. You got to protect that and you got to dare to dream big. 
You got it there. Psalms 126. Let's go there. Psalms 126. Let me show you what I mean. Praise God. Hear me. Because God's getting ready to tear, amen, praise God, some stuff apart for you and I. Amen, praise God. God's getting ready to do some stuff. Amen, praise God. To the big dreamers in this house, we getting ready to hit Dream City. I hope you're ready. Amen, praise God, for coming from out of this factory tonight. We getting ready to hit some places, praise God, that you never even thought about. Hear me. God's going to have you live in the dream for real. You're going to be driving it, living it, walking it, talking it. Hear me. It's going to be all around you because God's going to manifest through it. That's when you dream big, you receive big. See, that's why I got a problem with people that do small things. You got, I got a problem. I got a problem with, with someone that can't believe God, amen, for lunch. Praise God. You can't, you, you know, I'm bald. I got it going on. I'm bald. But you can't believe God for lunch. Praise God. You got to believe God that God is able to feed you. Watch this, amen, and so God tells, amen, Zion, this in uh, division 126 of Psalms, amen, verse number one, it says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that were, we were like them that were, we were like them that dreamed. Verse two, it says, then, after we were like them that dreamed, after we get it into our imagination, not only see it, amen, but feel it, touch it. It's like I teach many of you all in this house and those that are watching me, you got to learn to close your eyes and see things before they come. Stop being afraid to go to the dentist. See yourself walking out of the dentist with your jaw numb. If you're able to see yourself at the end of it, the whole procedure is, is no problem no more. You've got to learn how to work your imagination. The devil does not want you to, to imagine anything but destruction. Ooh, I hope I don't drown. Ooh, okay, well, why do you see yourself drown? Why don't you see yourself swimming? Amen. Tread. Learn how to backstroke. Learn how to glide on your back and backstroke. Ooh, I couldn't imagine that water being that high to my face. You ain't going to drown. Stop being scared. So you're going to drown, but then the person can swim right past you. So what make that person better? They know how to swim and you don't. What make them better than you? So they can get in that same water that you're scared of. You're going to go and go to heaven, and they're going to just swim on past you. Because they know something that you don't. They don't have fear that you have. Of the same water. The same swimming pool. The same lake. So your mind has got to now hear me. Allow faith to come into the dreams. I tell people many times. You got to learn how to close your eyes. And to see yourself through something. See yourself out of something. See yourself coming into something. See that phone call. See, amen, praise God, something good happening, amen, in your life. They picked you. They didn't pick your brother, sister, uncle, auntie. They called for you. They chose you. They hear me. They picked you out of the bunch. They picked you out of the resumes. You. And your imagination has to be there. It says, then, once you, amen, see that you're like them that dream, then was our mouth filled with laughter. Because when God began to do dreams, it, it makes you laugh. I had a dealership deny me, but then I went back, praise God, a week later, and they approved me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Look at that boy sitting out there. Because it makes you laugh. Dreams, when they come true, it makes you laugh. It's an exciting thing to have your dream come to pass. You ain't frowning, amen, praise God, when you finally got your food truck and you see your name on that mug. Like, whoa! I'm about to get paid, <laughs> man. You are excited. You ain't depressed. Oh, now let me go sit in the corner. What if nobody comes? Really? Who, who builds something? Amen. Praise God. And look for it to fall in. Well, I just built my new house. What if it fall in on me? Okay, come on now. Why you got to look at negative out of everything you do? I don't think he loved me. What if he, he really looking at my friend? What's wrong with you? You've got to get your mind set that there are some good things that's going to happen for you. You're the one they chose. You're the one. Hear me. They, they pick. You are the one. Thou art the man. Look at this. Amen. It says, then our mouth filled with laughter and, and, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen. Watch this. Pay attention. Then said they among the heathens, the Lord have done great things for them. Keep going. For the Lord have done great things for us. Whereof we are what? 
glad. We are glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm glad when my imagination thinks about Wednesday night. I'm glad when Sunday morning comes, I can now come and give God praise and show him how thankful I am for what he did that week. Some of you ain't use your imagination during the week. Why well, I want you to pay attention. Praise God. Hear me. And you're not using your imagination. I pray this message gets you tonight. Verse number four, look what it says. It says, and turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Turn them because why? All streams flow south. You understand this? So turn the streams so that, hear me, God is not requiring for you to swim upstream no more. God want everything to flow the right way to you. you. And it shouldn't be hard for you to get what belongs to you. Amen. What credit that belongs to you, what relationships belong to you. Hear me, it shouldn't be hard. And it's not going to be hard. God's going to take the hard out of your year. Praise God. He promises these look at this so he said turn again lord our captivities as the streams in the south they that sow in tears shall reap in joy see the ones shouting and praising god right now they're using their imagination knowing that one day i'm walking up in this boy and i'm gonna be so blessed hallelujah y'all don't understand what i went through to get here i had to dream big and because i dream big it happened mindset it's a mindset some folk got too small of a mindset you see yourself small so you 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 don't you don't see yourself having more than enough because you know my mom and them they always scraped and they never had enough. it's one time out of the year you see yourself big at this season income tax Woo! how much i'm getting Woo! 4800 Woo! i'm rich no you ain't rich 4,800. Woo! Now watch this. Here, here goes the revelation. Here comes the revelation on that. If you were to take that 4,800 and say, I'm not going to touch that at all. I'm just going to invest it all. Oh Ooh, what you trying to say? I deserve my new TV. I deserve. No, okay, hold on, hold on. See, because here in lies where you mess up at. Now you, you take that five and now you flip it. You begin to put it invested in something. Praise God. Hear me. Come June. Now you got 15,000. You got 20,000 to do something with and you keep flipping it. Praise God. Hear me. Now you get a chance to enjoy that extra every month of the year. Instead of one time, you get a chance to enjoy it over and over and over and over. But most folks fall for the okie doke. I deserve 4800 That's what we got. We're going to pay all our bills. We gonna, you run right through it. Within two weeks, it's gone. Right back to, okay, let me go back to work now. Let me, uh, let me go back to work. Uh, yeah, I got my new TV, but you're back hopping. I mean, the boss, move fast. Okay, boss. You, you're, back, you're back at it. Because you just had opportunity of $4,800 to change your life. That $4,500, $4,800 could have brought you $40,000 this year. But hear me, but because you took that opportunity and missed it again, after year after year doing the exact same thing, remember retardation, expecting something different. You didn't apply no dream to it. This is something different. So that's so after about five, six years of doing that, like, dang, none of that time, it don't work. Every time I do that, I blow through that money. Praise God. Every year, I don't have, I don't have nothing to show for it. But some Jordans. <laughs> Hear me. Or a chain. Or a watch. Or a big TV. Just little stupid stuff. Something that don't yield you back no return. Yeah, but hear me, but you take 4800 and you put $800 into nail polish. Guess what? You ain't got to buy no more nail polish for the year. That 800 would turn into three, four thousand dollars worth of nail, nail polish proof. proof. Hear me, and then you take that hear me, equipment, you take that 4800 and you put it into two more photo booths, and now them photo booths will make you another $20,000 this year off of that $4,000 investment. Hear me, understand that it, it, it ain't hard how, amen, life works. It's just you just don't know what to do with the imagination. 
And you're not around someone to, to, to push you or to move you, amen, into the realm of entrepreneurship. And God, it's opportunity. And that's why God, hear me, when God puts money in folk's hand and they do wrong with it, the Bible says, hear me, sparingly they give, sparingly they should receive. It means that it tends to poverty. They don't know what to do with it. Wealth must be respected. Folk that have it, praise God, they ain't balling out. Folk that got it, praise God, are not all out there blowing every dime they got. Sitting up by the pool drinking, amen, their tea and just laying out every day. I ain't never got to work another day in my life. I got $30 million. How long you think that's going to last? You eating every day, paying the bills every day in your $3 million house. Amen, praise God. The house itself sucks up about, about twenty five, thirty thousand 30000 a month. So you do the math on that, hear me, that's about a quarter of a half a million dollars just to live in that house every year. So then, hear me, you got 30 million, you live three years, now hear me, there's about four, four, three, four million dollars you spent just for living in the house. You're 30 down to 26. And then you're eating, praise God, and all the other expenses, you want to keep a new Bentley, I got to keep a new year. Oh, I can't drive that four-year-old Bentley, I got to keep a new one. So now you trading that in, and that $400,000 Bentley that you bought three years ago is now only worth 180. So now you lost 220,000 off of that Bentley. Now you're buying another new Bentley for four five hundred thousand dollars. So you lost a quarter million dollars off of driving that car for two years, and you bought three of them. So there's another million, two million dollars lost. So your thirty million is down to twenty one million after four years living like that. I'm just I ain't doing nothing. I'm just sitting around chilling. No, you're gonna be broke. Keep let let ten years go by. That's why most of the rappers, all of them, they end up broke. You're like you had thirty million dollars. You can't come up with a hundred thousand now. Wow. Because they did not think that it will stop. I'm just on my money. It's going to keep forever just rolling in. Money is a spirit. Watch this. Pay attention. So your dreams must be something that you do not allow. Amen. Praise God. Uh, things to come in to your dreams. When you dream big, you must realize, amen, that, that, that there's the enemy out here and he wants to keep you in chains. But God says tonight he's breaking the chains off of you. Amen. He's turning the captivity off of you and that bondage. Amen. Hear me. You're not to be in bondage another year of your life because you're hearing the truth and those that know the truth. Amen. You should be made free and the chains should be breaking off of you because of the anointing. You should be like, no, no, this year, praise God, pastor said that uh, I'm, not, I'm not being retarded with this money. With this money, I'm going to make something happen. So therefore, come June when it, it is 92 degrees today, I'm going to look back at myself and say, ooh, I did something called delayed gratification in February, in March, with my income tax, and I invested it. I put it in Acorn. I put it here, and look what my money is now. Hear me, let me pull out three grand, hear me, and still have my $4,800. Amen. Praise God. You will learn. Learn how to do better, amen, when you, when you walk and dream better. You'll do better when you dream better. So you got to learn how to dream better. And God said here, he says, the Lord going to turn your captivity. So when you, when you got and came to this ministry, it is our job to bring you out of all forms of captivity. Every, every type of thing that had you bound, amen, whether it be sex, whatever it was, whatever had you bound, it's the job of the word of God to pull you out of that. To make you free, amen. So nothing should drive you but God. Look at this. So God says, release yourself from bondage. Amen. Praise God. And being released from bondage is, is like a dream. So when you get released from paying, have to pay all those bills and pay car notes, and you pay the car off. How many of you ever paid a car off before? Praise God. Hear me. I, I, I remember we had a Range Rover, and I gave my wife the last payment to it. And she, praise God, she walked into that, and that, that, that credit union. Praise God, she was so bold walking up in there. I mean, she had, she had, give me my theme music. She had, she had her theme music going on up in there, like, yeah, oh, yeah. She had, she had it going in there with the last payment. Really? Oh, this is the last payment? And then they get mad at you for coming with the last payment. Oh, no. Uh, uh, you, do you think I want to refinance it? Why would I want to refinance it? We're able to give you money for it. No, we don't know. We don't need money for it. We own it. So understand that that's how life goes, but you learn these things and praise God. And you want God to do that. God says he's getting ready to turn y'all situation around. 
Just as we read here, it's turned the captivity of Zion. He's getting ready to turn it so much that God says, I'm getting ready to restore it like torrential rain. I'm getting ready to return, amen, restore some things back to you, and I'm going to come, I'm going to bring it down, amen, like torrential, meaning it's going to soak everything within 30 seconds. God's going to do it, amen, and nothing will be able to stop this one. This one's going to come because God says, you've been faithful over the few. I'm getting ready to torrential rain your future. I'm getting ready to bless you big. So you've got to learn, praise God, how to grab this. Amen. This dream factory is not something that you just, amen, praise God, just think that it's small. Amen. Praise God. That's why God gives you dreams. The devil hates dreams. Because dreams show him that he's lost. Let me say it again. Praise God. I like y'all over here. Dreams show the devil that he's lost you. That God owns you and the Satan has lost. That's what dreams do. Amen. Because dreams come from God. Nightmares come from the devil. Stop liking nightmares. Some of y'all like them nightmares. You like them hood dudes. You like them nightmares. You want nightmares. I mean, I, I, why would you want to get with someone that, that calls you gray hair? Stress like that. Staying up all night. I mean, they're they killing you. So what, what, what people don't realize, praise God, is stress is a silent killer. Yeah, I'm in my 20s, though, but, but you stand up all night like that, they're skimming days off your life. Don't worry about it. When you hit 60, you'll start seeing all the problems show up for what you went through in your 20s. Really? No, no, that's, yes. When people have heart attacks, hear me, they, those heart attacks didn't come because they started eating steak at, at 56 and 63. It was, hear me, it was that whole cake they ate when they was 22, 24 years old. That whole gallon of ice cream, they were just shoving it back. In our blood is everything we've ever ate. Ah, uh, it's quiet in here now. I start talking about food. You forget about dreaming. Uh, you're like, oh, no, that's a nightmare, Pastor. Come on, can you switch the subject? Go back to dreams. Go back to dreams. Go back. I mean, some of y'all have a remote control. Y'all be rewinding or fast forward in this section. You can't fast forward, God. Amen. Praise God. God wants your dream to come to pass by you acknowledging truth. Anybody that produces a nightmare, you need to get nightmares out of your life. Why do you want that? This stress. Everyone that's stressing me, praise God, I get them out of my life. I got somebody out of my life Sunday that stressed me because why? I'm like, oh, we ain't got to go through this. God bless you. Have a, have a good day. You're out. See you. You're fired. I, I don't play stress. I don't, hear me, there ain't no need for stress. Hear me, there is no need for stress. If you want to fight, amen, you can go. I ain't got to fight you. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I love God, amen, and the word of God stands for truth. Amen, praise God. And anybody that loves lies and loves untruth, they can step to the left, to the left. Praise God, hear me. Understand this, that, 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 that life is too short to stress. I ain't got to argue with you. You want to argue. No, I ain't going to argue with you. You mad. You big mad. No, I ain't got to argue with you. No, no, well, I got to argue. We got to argue. 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 That's how some people say it. No, 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 no. I'm a dream fulfiller. Praise God. Hear me. I, hear me. I, I'm, I'm a, hear me. Watch it. Watch it. I'm a dream fulfiller. Hey, Amen. What, what kind of killer did you call it? What was you? You a what killer? What was it? Somebody write it down. Poverty killer. Right. Dream fulfiller. I told you, praise God, it's coming in this house. Poverty killer and dream fulfiller. That's what God is and that's what he's doing in here. He preached it, amen, three, four weeks ago, a month ago, where God says, I'm a poverty killer. And tonight he's telling you from the dream factory, he's a dream fulfiller. Amen. He's ready to now fulfill some dreams in this house. Praise God, torrential rain's coming. Amen, praise God. But you must remember this. Amen, never ever forget this. Amen, because I want you to catch this and not miss this one point. Remember this. Remember this. The end times of dreams. When you have dreams, you got to understand that when you are a dreamer, you think outside of the box. People that are haters think inside of the box. 
inside the box, outside the box. These people hear me, and most folk that change the world are people that think outside of the box. See, so you got to stop letting, amen, praise God, dreamers, amen, that dream into hear me, that people that's in the box try to hear me hit your dreams. No, God's making you, amen, praise God, unbreakable, amen, praise God, in spite of the boxes that try to hit your life, your dreams are going to stand this year, in spite of what hater try to come and drop, amen, their small square mind on you. They're trying to put you in a box. Watch this, watch this, and I want, you to, I want you to see this because I want you to pay attention. Watch this, amen. There was a time, amen, praise God, amen, where we had telephones with a rotary dial. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, hear me, and the one number, praise God, that you hated to, to use was nine. <laughs> I mean, it took you almost 30 seconds to, to dial a number. Amen, praise God. And we were excited, amen, praise God, for, to have a phone. You able to be on the phone with someone, and you only had about a six-foot cord. You about from right here to right here is all it, all it was, praise God. And then somebody invented a real long stretch cord. You was able to take that phone that's on the wall, go in the kitchen, and wash the dishes while you got you were on the phone. That cord was able to be 25,000 feet away. Be like, hey, what's going on, girl? You good? Yeah, we going. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm going to see your prom. You going? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mama, says Rick still on the phone. Y'all yeah. yeah, remember them days, praise God. And then somebody said, wait a minute. Hold on, let me see. Praise God, I got a dream to do something better than just have wires. Let me create a mobile phone. And that mobile phone, praise the Lord, amen, praise God, it looked just like this bag right here. You walked around, amen, praise God, with a phone and a strap on. And guess what? The phone still had the cord on it, but it was a short cord, and you were able to say, guess what, amen? It's got an antenna on it. Hey, how y'all doing? Yeah, I'm, on, I'm at the mall on the phone. For real? Yeah, it's, I'm on my new mobile phone. Amen, praise God. And it was a mobile phone. Amen, praise God. And somebody, amen, thought, praise God, that that idea was good, but they said, no, I think even better. Amen. Let's create, amen, now a cellular phone with no wires. Praise God. Amen. And hear me. It's only got better and better because people think outside of the box. So somebody thought of, amen, a phone. And I heard one guy say this that made me laugh. Amen. He said, he said it's amazing that phones are almost like people. He said, but it's different. Phones, amen, praise God, they're doing something different than people are doing. Amen. They're getting thinner and they're getting smarter as they get older. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We doing the exact opposite. Amen. Praise God. Made me laugh when I heard that. But I'm like, man, thinner and smarter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So don't let no one's hear me boxes fall on your dream with that small mind. We thank God for those minds that are on the mind of people to realize and say, God, you got me in spite of what if, amen, that mind that, that said, amen, we can fly. Man can fly would have never thought outside the box. You run as hard as you can, try to lift off. You're going you're gonna to jump and you're going to hit that ground. But it was someone that had a mind that said, I'm going to dream in spite of y'all boxes that y'all got. Don't box someone in. See, that's why I thank God for my pastor. He's done some stuff that's flat out, out the box. Praise God. Him, he can pray for a peppermint and it heal. Amen. Dental. Amen. Sores and sores in your mouth. Him, he can do different things. See, some of you are so in a box, you can't see God doing something supernatural with some water or with a peppermint. But I believe God, amen, that God has a generation that's raising up and say, God, if you want to bless a peppermint, amen, to heal my cancer, if you want to bless, praise God, give me some water to deliver me, amen, praise God from the bondage of pornography then hear me I'll drink that water I'll eat that peppermint I'll receive deliverance upon what I believe outside of the box let me, let me show you this and I'm through amen Genesis chapter praise God 37 last one last story and we're going home amen look at this so God tells us someone getting something tonight amen Praise God. So you got to learn to dream again. You got to pick up those dreams. You got to pick back up the dreams. You got to pick up the dreams. Some of you have, hear me, have forgot about what you love to do as a child. Some of you were sculptors as a child. Amen. Praise God. You ain't touched it in 60 years. 
Praise God, hear me. Some of you are, hear me, designers. You ain't touched, amen, down a pen or a pad. Go buy your drawing books, amen. They got them at the dollar store now. I mean, go buy you drawing sketchbooks everywhere. All the pens, the pencils, it's everywhere now. Everything is cheap now. I'm looking at this generation now. For y'all to come up in this age, I'm like, God, this is the best era ever. I mean, hear me, you, you can go places hear me, and get stuff. Hear me, I mean, I, I wish we had as good as some of y'all have it now. Back in my day, praise God, if you didn't have real money, you didn't get no clothes. Kreskis and Kmart and all of them, them clothes, amen, praise God, look like K Kresky and, and Kmart clothes, amen, and praise God, it was just, when you wear your whole t-shirt up, you can see right through it, like, oh, why is it so, why is it so thin, amen, amen, praise God, you put your shoes on, you slide, whoa, wow, man, these shoes, they supposed to be karate shoes, why am I sliding everything over, it, it, it was just, everything was not right, if you were poor, you were poor, you looked like it. Praise God. I mean, we didn't have all the stuff out, Foreman Mills and Ross and, and all these, amen, Marshalls. And all. I mean, when you go get stuff for $10, 12, it's on sale, on clearance, $8, I mean, and it's Calvin Klein or it's, or it's, or it's Polo. I mean, you able to go get all real stuff, amen, for $25, get a whole outfit. Back in my day, $25 gave you some sliding karate shoes and a karate hookup. I amen. you walking around, amen, I'm Leroy Jones. Amen. And you thought you was fresh. Slide around, amen. Don't do a jump kick and land, amen. Them, them shoes gonna slide. But things have changed. Praise God, hear me. So it don't take much now, amen, praise God, to get things. Amen, everything is at your disposal. You got dollar stores that sell some of everything in it. So if you ain't got something, bro, no, I just, I just can't get that pass. I don't know why I can get a sketchboard. I don't know why I can get the bean pins. I don't know why I can get my dream or my vision to come to pass. I don't know why I can get some receipts from. No, you go buy everything anywhere now. Amen. For little or nothing. The excuses are over now. Amen. All the excuses are out the window now. Amen. It's time for you to dream big. Amen. Praise God. And then begin to bring those dreams to reality. Someone shout amen. amen. So now Joseph was one. Praise God. They flowed in this dream, Pastor T. And I want you to understand, he was a dreamer. And I want you to pay attention to this because he had understanding of dreams. And I'm, I'm wrapping up. Give me 10 more minutes. We're done. Amen. Look at what happened. We're in Genesis chapter 37. Look at what it says starting in verse number 1. We're going to do a little reading. It says, And Jacob dwelled in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. There, were, there are the generations of Jacob, Joseph being seven Seventeen years old. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Belha, and with the sons of Zelpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father's father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his what? Of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. Now let me let me let me break it down before we get to the stories that we understand it. Now, if you understand who Israel is, Israel is Jacob, the one that wrestled with God. How I many y'all remember that? Where God says, No longer is your name Jacob, your name shall be Israel. Amen. So he named him and changed his name when he wrestled with the angel of the Lord, when he wrestled with God. God touched his 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 thigh, praise God, it was out of joint. Okay, now remember Jacob earlier on in his life, he wanted Rachel, which was beautiful. But hear me, his uncle, his, 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 his in-law, amen, praise God, uh, fooled him or tricked him and made him work seven years for Leah. And then he worked another seven years for Rachel. He really wanted to marry Rachel. So now watch this. This is years later. Now, now you got to realize that Joseph is Rachel's son. The woman that he loved, he just, ooh, she's so fine, ooh, amen. Leah, amen, praise God, was the cross-eyed one. Okay, so she had a lazy eye, all right? Praise God, hear me, I'm, I'm, it's in the Bible, y'all, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, that's, read your Bible, amen, praise God, hear me. He didn't want Leah, he was like, no, nah, Leah, no, nah, mm -mm, no, nah, I don't want a whole bunch of cross -eyed. I don't want a whole bunch of babies, praise God, to KC. I need this. So, so, so Jethro made him marry Leah. He woke up like, the devil is a liar. <laughs> what the world? You got me drunk, man. It's a mess. Amen. But he wanted Rachel. So he had to work seven more years. He got Rachel. So now he had Leah and Rachel to take care of. 
He had a baby by Rachel by the name of Joseph. He loved this baby because now why? He had it in his old age. So what he did, pay attention, because some of y'all are like, designers ain't in the Bible. Stop lying. Designers are in the Bible. Here's the first illustration of a designer in the Bible because it says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a Gucci coat of many colors. A Louis coat. He made him a designer, multicolor coat. Nobody else had a color coat in the Bible. Read it for yourself. Colors, hear me, was expensive. Designer. The wealthy people wore color coats. When the, hear me, when the prodigal son came running back, the father called for his royal robe to be put on his son. Gucci. So Gucci Lil ain't brand new. Y'all just tripping. Like, ooh, he got labels. He got labels. No, hear me. It's only a name. If you hear me believe and dream big that your name can be great, he can make your name great. Just like you hear me, amen, wearing all those names on your body. One time a woman looked at my wife and said, why? Why you got to wear all those names? She said, everything you got on, ma'am, is, is name also. Look at your Calvin Klein. Look at your, hear me, your undergarments. What are they? Hanes? That's a name. Amen. What about socks on your feet? Oh, yeah. Everything you got on has a name. If it says Myers, Essential, whatever it is on it, it has a name on it. So don't hate on Michael Kors or hate on the name. Amen. Everything you have has a name. It's just some names are better than others. Look at your neighbor and say, my name is better than others. Amen. So don't hate. Stop hating names. Because God says, if you with him, he's going to establish his covenant in the earth, and he's going to make your name great. So when you start looking at it, like, I wouldn't pay that for that. Well, what, what you got on, you pay for. You still pay for another name. Open up them shoes and look at the name on them. It's a name on them shoes. It, it don't come no name. Back in the 70s, we used to have no name stuff. It used to be no name. What kind of t-shirt is that? It ain't, it ain't got no tag in it. It just had <laughs> no name at all. It didn't have no letters on it. It had nothing on it. Made in, it had none of that on it. That's them no name. What are those? Hey Amen. That's what we wore in the 70s, 80s. All right, hear me, but God want to bless your name. So pay attention. So this is the first time he had that coat. So he walked around with that coat. Verse four, it says, watch this. It says, and when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brother, they did what? They hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. They hated him, not just like them. Hey, like, here you go. Here you come with that coat on. Why you got to be so flashy? Well, let's see, God made me flashy. Why, why, why you, why you, how are you mad at me? I, I picked my color. Did you pick your pink, your orange, your blue you have on? Do you have other colors at home? So you picked your color, I picked mine. Why are you mad at my color? See, I let you know it's a problem with people in their mind. Problem in their imagination. Watch this. It says, and Joseph, look at what happened. It says, and Joseph dreamt, dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brother, and they did what? Hate him yet. Yet the more. So they already hated him. And then, so hear me. So that's why you don't expose your, watch your dreams to haters. Yeah. Hear me? Because they, they ain't going to turn around. You want them to turn around and say, oh, well, if you're going to do that, you can come rich. Then you're going to bless me. You're going to come rich. Okay, I'm going to start liking you. No, know, when people hate you, they hate you. Amen. Ain't nothing you can do, amen, to change, amen, the way they feel about you. Haters do what? Hate. That's what haters do. So they hated him no more. Keep going. Going all the way to 11 real quick. It says that he said unto them, here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. Amen. That was so arrogant. But he had the Gucci coat on. So watch this. Keep going. It says, and for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaves, look at this, arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves, amen, stood, look at this, and around about and made obeisance to my sheaves. In other words, bow down. Worship, obesity means worship, amen. And his brother said to him, shall thou indeed reign over us, little brother? Or shall thou, look at this, indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his what? Dreams. And for what? And for his what? Words, amen. And for his word. So they hated him for his dreams 
and just how you talk. Some people are irritated with you with how you talk. Uh, I never, never understood that. Some people just can't stomach the way you talk. And I had to accept that. I said, okay, so some people just don't like me. Okay, I get it. Now, guess what? It ain't your job to stay in their face. See, if you know somebody hates you, why are you wasting time and your breath on them saying anything to them? It's like talking to that wall. They, they, they're emotionally not connected. They, their energy is not there for you. So you got to learn how to hear me. When you are a dreamer, you got to, amen, praise God, get around other dreamers. That's going to hear what you say and say amen to you. They ain't going to say, I doubt that. But his brothers was all doing that. We doubt that. You ain't going to be over us. We doubt that. So everything he dreamed and talked about, they doubted. Watch this. And I believe spiritually, this is not in the Bible, but spiritually, because he exposed himself completely to his brothers, this is the reason why he went through part of the process in order to get to his dream. This is why you got to watch him and you can make life harder for yourself when you expose everything to your right hand, what your left hand is doing. When you expose everything to your left hand, what your right hand is doing. I'm about to give me a car. I'm about to give me that. I told you all this when I was a young man. Praise God. Young man, he's passed on now. Amen. Praise God. But I told a friend that I thought he was a friend. He's an associate. Amen. Back when we was in sixth grade, I told him, I said, I'm about to get these Adidas. I'm about to get these top tens. Oh, man, I'm about to go get them. He made up. Praise God. My mom, I was 10 years old. I'm my mom. She's about to go get them for me. Praise God. It was 83. I was like, they fresh out. They just been out about two years, about a year, two years. Them top tens, man. I'm getting the red, white, and blue ones. Yeah, boy. I'm telling you, I'm going to sport them. Week later, hey, Rich, check this out, dude. Boom, guess who had them? I learned at 10 years old, like, really, dude? You just going to go buy? I thought you said you wanted the, the Patrick Ewings, the, the, the white, baby blue and orange Patrick Ewings. Now you went and got the Adidas? Yeah, yeah, no, I figured these were more hotter, so I went and got these. And I, I looked down there, and I did not get the shoes because he got them. And, and here, man, I went home, and I cried to my mom. I was like, Mom, what are you going to buy me a shoe, Mom? I said, I don't even want you to buy them now. I was like, why would he do that? Haters hate. That's what the haters do. But it was a lesson, amen. At 10 years old, I learned that lesson. Do not expose your stuff. You go and get it, amen. Once you go and get it, then you show them, this is what I had in my imagination. So I had to learn how to hold it in. But to hear me understand this, like I said, I've always wanted to make certain that I was, I, I, you know, I, I did right first and then exposed it. Look at what it says. It says, shall you reign over us? Amen. Keep going. It says that he dreamed a dream yet, and he dreamed, and he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brothers, and said, behold, I've dreamed, dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. Look at this. Amen. He says, and he told it to his father and, his, and to his brothers. And his father did what? Shut up, boy. What you doing? And he said unto him, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed, Joseph? Shall I and thy mother and thy brother indeed come and bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Watch this. He says, and his brethren envied him. Watch this. It went from hated him the more to envied him. But his father, what? Because he was prophetic. See, Jacob understood. Now, wait a minute. Now, I do know about prophecy and about blessings because I stole the blessing from Esau. Amen. And I got the blessing. So I know when God said he's going to bless someone, he's going to do something. So let me observe what he said because I'm just going to sit back and watch this. If God said it, we're going to see it. Amen. But the brethren, they envied him. Now watch this. When a person's emotions goes to envy, it goes to the place of death now. I want to see you dead. I don't want to see you move out of state. I want to see you no longer breathing. So when you look at the movie, amen, for old, if you haven't seen it, you see this movie. It's a really great movie. It's called The Bodyguard. With, with Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston. You need to see the movie. Movie, phenomenal movie. You need to see the movie. Amen. She's a star. Her sister. I'm giving out. I'm dropping a dime for it. Her sister. Praise God. Hear me. Had, had it hit so cute. Like, yeah, sister. Oh, that was a great job. Great performance. Mm -hmm. And then when it all came down, amen, praise God, the spirit was exposed. And they did the research of who it was. They hired the hitman. It was her sister. Her sister exposed that face. I hate you. I hate you. That's envy. I want to see you dead. 
So that's a very dangerous side of individuals. If a person envy you, amen, praise God. So that word, amen, it's not a good word. Amen, praise God. Some of y'all buying cologne, envy, oh, envy. You, <laughs> you better watch, amen, praise God, what you spray it, what you're putting on, what you're writing around. You, you're buying clothes with it on there, envy, envy. You better watch that. Praise God. That's another place. So now watch this. So now here comes the situation. And then for the sake of time, because we're, we're so far beyond time, this is what happens to Joseph. Joseph now walks around with his Gucci coat. His brothers, amen, come together, transpire, and say, look here, we need to kill him. Because he just come and bragging every day, I can't take it. He's pulling up with his Bentley and he's looking all pressed, all pressed and clean and all that. No, we got we to gotta get rid of him. Watch this. And all of them transpire or conspire together say yeah we're gonna kill him yeah well, you agree yeah yeah we're gonna, get, we're, gonna get, we're gonna kill this but yeah, we're gonna kill him so then they said well how can we kill him well we take him out to the field okay him and we then draw some blood from him and put it on his garment on that gucci coat he yeah. and show it to the dad and we'll we'll be able to tell him that some beast has eaten him and then reuben heard them say it and said no 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 wait a minute y'all stop tripping stop tripping now we don't, let's not kill him let's let's throw him into a pit and then hear me what we'll do is is we'll throw him into the pit and then at least, if we throw him in the pit, we can at least still say he's dead, and then he'll be down in a deep hole. Now, this pit, when you think about a pit, you think only maybe 10 or 15 feet. Now, I want you to look at this pit. The pit that they threw him in was too high to climb out. So then when they threw him down in there, it was literally a place of confinement. They wanted to make certain that he's never remembered no more. That whatever is down, the animal's down there, he cannot eat. Remember, no water in your body for three days. Just three days, you will die of heart starvation. Your kidney begin to fail. This is why you got to drink water. Stop drinking pop. Drink some water because your body needs hydration. After three to four days, your body begins to go and fight itself. You need hydration, water. We're that sensitive. So they drop him in there. But then Reuben said, no, 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 no. Better yet. Amen. They threw him in a pit. Watch this. He went from a pit situation. Was there. The Bible does not tell you how long he's in the pit. Then they thought about it. said, no, no, no. Better yet. Amen. Hear me. They were traveling merchants coming by. Praise God. And, hear me, and they, they seen and heard him crying out of that pit. They pick him up out of that pit. And hear me. And they take him over to Egypt. He goes into slavery. So now he goes from being his father's favorite into now being sold by the merchants that pick him up into being a slave. He's like, no, wait a minute. Now here it is, my father and my brothers. I mean, hear me, we had plenty of food. We, we're somebody. We're God's. Now remember now, this is Abraham's grandson. This is Abraham's seed. Great grand. You, you see him now, the lineage fall now. So that he knew Abraham is my covenant blessing. That in blessings, he should bless me. I'm, I'm supposed to be a prosperous man. I was like, now he a slave? He said, how did I get here? See, some of, some of you all wondering, why have I gone through so much hardship? You're on your way to the dream. That's, that's part of, the, there's pit stops, amen, in order for you to get to, amen, that you got to take on hardship to get to the dream. The dream requires the prerequisite of it. That weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Hear me, I can keep going on and on about the scriptures. That hear me, you've got to go through something to get something. Well, pay attention, pay attention. So he goes now into being in slavery. Amen, he's in slavery, amen, praise God, to these merchants that found him. And then they take him to Egypt, and then they sell him as well. They sell him, and then Potiphar comes and buys him. When they come, when they come and buy him, Reuben and them, they sell him for 30 pieces of silver to the merchants that, that walked past, that drove past. And then, hear me, he sold in the marketplace to, to, to Potiphar. Potiphar, a man, praise God, was one of the Egyptian guards. He was one of the high-ranking officials of Egypt. So now Joseph now is now a slave to Egypt spokesman. And now he comes in his house and watch this. And what part of the realizes that this slave is skilled. This slave, no, he knows some stuff. Even though he's, he, he, he's, 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 he's not like, he, I got many slaves, but this one right here knows some stuff. I can't take that. He knows something about, about farming. 
agriculture. He knows some how to keep the sheep. He knows how to, amen, clean the bulls. He knows how to take care of, of the house. He knows how to probably fold things. He knows the, the, the laws of Moses, the penitents. Even though he's in e e Egyptian house, he knows order and structure. So Potiphar starts putting him over everything in his house. Everything in his house. Now watch this. Amen. Go back. Praise God, son. Hear me. Go back. Amen. He's in Potiphar's house now. Amen. Praise God. And by him in, in Potiphar's house, you got to realize, praise God, he's at a place, amen, where he's now working and assigning, amen, everything in the house. Potiphar gives him the excitement of everything in the house. He gives him the rulership of controlling all the other slaves, all of the money, everything in the house. And for the sake of reading, there's four chapters here where you need to go through it to be able to read it. Keep this picture up. Amen. Jump over, praise God. Amen. To, to, uh, to, uh, we had, uh, jump over to, amen, chapter 38. Chapter 38, no, verse, thir chapter 39, real quick. All right, praise God. Him, and he bought him, amen, verse number one, Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down hither. And the Lord was with what? Joseph, and he was a what? Oh, wait a minute, hold on, he's a slave. How can he be a prosperous man and a slave? See, some of you all, amen, are caught up. Well, because I'm African-American, I can't be prosperous. Amen, understand that got nothing to do with it. Amen, our ancestors may have come over here as slaves, but understand, we may be immigrants or we may hear me, amen, migrated to this country, but that does not mean you can't dominate and own everything that your heart tells you you can own. You can have it all if you believe it. It says, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of the, his master, the Egyptian. Watch this. And he began to now, amen, praise God, bless everything in that house. It says, and the master saw that the Lord was with him, verse 3, and that the Lord made all that he did to what? Prosper in his hand. I mean, he had no slowness going to his business. Everything he touched turned to gold. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put in his hands. He says, now everything, everything in his house was given to Joseph except for, amen, two things he kept. Amen, praise God, was the bread that he ate, the food that he ate, and his wife. You can, you can rule everything else in the house, Joseph, but just don't touch my wife, don't touch my food. All right, so he allowed him to rule everything, and praise God. And as he was ruling, amen, praise God, hear me, Potiphar's wife, amen, just started looking at him. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a man taking charge right there. Look at him. He, he running things. I know my husband is Egyptian, but I mean, that's that Hebrew stuff right there. All right, now, hey, Hebrew. Hey, 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 all right, amen, uh, <laughs> shalom, <laughs> you know what I mean, it's just, she, she's now, man, idolizing and seeing him run things, and that's why I try to tell every man, two things is what's going to bring you down, women or money, if you can control those two, you will be able to stay on the course of life and get what God is, money and women, those are the two things that bring every great man down, two things. So understand, if you can't dominate those, you will not be able to go far in this earth. So he gets, amen, control his stuff, and a wife, amen, praise God, powerful wife, she, she, she calls him in one time, tells him, come on, uh, Joseph, come on, lie with me, lie with me. He said, look here, you know, I ain't about to touch you, woman. Praise God, amen, praise God. Jump down to verse number, praise God, amen, uh, verse number seven, it says, and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, lie with me, Joseph. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wroth nothing, not wroth nothing, look at this, amen, what is with me within thy house, excuse me, let me put these glasses on, what is with me in this house, he hath committed all that he have to my hand. He says, there is none greater in this house than I, neither have he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How can, look at this, says, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? It ain't about, ain't nobody going to see. I love God more than I love you. Amen. Hear me. How can I do this thing that after it's done, I still got to get up and act like I, I, I belong to God? And ain't nothing worse than, 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 than a person that's divisive and deceptive. Hey, beautiful, how you doing? You go home to your husband or your wife. No, you did that. 
So I don't justify violence, as I said, but see, when people are caught in the act, hear me, I can understand why rage, people see red and do things and they end up in jail for the rest of their life. Okay, I can understand it because the issue is, is what type of heart make you say, I ain't going to get caught, oh well, it's good. You should care about how God see your heart. Before, after, and how your heart is. Because that, heart, that type of heart saying, I can do it, it's going to be all right. That heart deserves hell. Would you agree? It's supposed to be in hell. That heart, that heart a divisive heart like that, someone that murders someone and go home and eat a sandwich, that person need to be in jail for the rest of their life. They need to be in hell. It's hell in this jail. You need that if you didn't do that. And here, man, don't find, don't find no problem with that. You murdered that mother, that, that, that woman, she getting off bus, coming up on her work. Hey, man, Nino Brown, he just, I just stepped to her, boom. I was out there for the body fell. Hey, man, that's somebody's mama you did that to? You supposed to go to hell. That man, praise God, hear me, came up on Nino Brown and said, hell requires your soul. And in the Nino Brown. Why? Because, hear me, he had to reap what he sowed. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So you start talking about that, I and I, people are like, oh, no, 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 wait a minute, hold on, Pastor. People want to back, back, skip, skip back to grace. No, because Jesus loves us now, Pastor. I need you to, amen, give me my, my, my nice keyboard, amen. Give me my nice keys, amen, praise God. No, Jesus loves us. <laughs> Jesus will never condemn anyone to hell. He loves us. Jesus loves you. And no matter what you've done, the grace can cover it. You can go and murder 10 more people tonight, but tomorrow you repent, he'll receive you. That's a lie. It's the heart of it. When you are a practicer, I want to try to do it better next time. When I get it, I want to try to do this. When I get him, I'm going to try to do this. I'm trying to do that. I'm going to try to do this and do it better next time. When you have a heart like that, that person deserves to be in jail. That person deserves deserve it. Thank God God did not put us what we deserve. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But when you start walking upright, amen, praise God. Hear me. Joseph said, I cannot do this great wickedness and sin against my God. You go into message. He says, my God. I ain't going to do that to my God because I ain't going to be the same if I do that to my God. And I need to maintain the victory. The God that brought me from the pit to this place and make me rule, made me hear me. The Lord is with me. And if he would be for me, then he's more than the world against me. He's greater than the world against me. Praise God. Let me finish. Let me finish. So then now he goes in and amen. She looks at him, praise God, and she realized that he ain't messing around with her. And for the sake of time, amen, he didn't do it. So she, she see him in there handling his business one day. She grabs his clothes. Amen. He said, I ain't messing with you. She, amen. He runs out. She holds on to his garment in her hand. She has this garment. She calls for the guards and said, this Hebrew came in and tried to mock us, tried to touch me, tried to rape me. Praise God. And Potiphar puts him in jail. He goes in jail. Watch this. The Lord is still with Joseph. The Lord is still with him. And Joseph in the prison. He's in there with two individuals with a man, a butler. Watch this. He's with a butler and also to a chef. And these two individuals, amen, praise God, had dreams. And hear me, Joseph, which is the dreamer, he, he, was, he was prophetic. He determined to tell them what their dreams meant. And he said, when you're free, you go back to Pharaoh, when you're the butler, you go get back there. Praise God, know that, tell, tell Pharaoh of me. Tell somebody else, get me out of this jail. Long story short, he gets, he gets back to Pharaoh's, and over two years goes by. The chef and the butler goes back. He kills hey man, the one that he told him, you're going to die. He says, Pharaoh's going to take your head off of you. And that happened. The butler gets back to him and says, okay, you know what? Yeah, I forgot. There's a young man. Pharaoh starts having nightmares and says, I can't understand what my, not what my dreams mean. He said, there's an interpreter that's in prison by the name of Joseph. He pulls Joseph out of prison and interprets Pharaoh's dreams. Tells Pharaoh what his dreams mean. Now, here it is, a young boy that just grew up with Jacob's house, the least of his brethren, walking around with his Gucci coat of many colors. Praise God. Hear me. And all of a sudden, he went from a pit to slavery, to the Midianites, to slavery with Potiphar's house, now to prison, and then now he's standing before the president of the whole country, the king, the pharaoh. He tells him the dream, what it meant, and Pharaoh puts him in charge. Puts him in charge. He takes his ring off his hand and gives him the ring, meaning authority. So whoever sees this ring will bow to you. He made, he made Joseph go and ride on the second chariot behind him. There's no one greater than Joseph in Egypt now. 
He goes from prison to being the man. He's driving Bentleys and Rolls Royces. Watch this. And God raised him up and him. And now all of a sudden, now they take the grain, save seven years of fat. They save all the grain. What he told Pharaoh, he said there's seven years of famine coming. And he told him to save up for those seven years of famine. And Joseph made Egypt the richest continent in the world when he was with Pharaoh. Everyone was starving. Hear me, his brothers and his father come to get food, come to Egypt to get food. And guess what they run into? Joseph. Read these stories. Phenomenal. If you read these next five books, it's going to bless your life. I promise you. Because Joseph comes up and he's good. He comes back to his brothers and him and mess and hymns them up for a minute and then forgives them and blesses them. Say, it's your brother. It's Joseph, the one you threw in the pit. I'm going to bless you back. You hated on me. You talked about me. Yo, you beat me up. You threw me, brother. You threw me, Reuben. All y'all threw me into that pit. Y'all wanted me to die. Y'all envied me. You wanted me dead because I had a dream. Because I told you what God said he's going to do with me. You got people around your life that don't mean you any good. You got to now move out of the excuse realm because God's trying to take you to the palace. He's trying to take you from the pit to the palace. And here, man, God says, here, if you think this year, 2024, if you think outside of the box, you're going to go beyond your wildest dreams is what God says. Everyone stand. I'm done. I'm done. You're going to go beyond your wildest dreams. The dream factory in this house is for you to understand that God has dreams. This is what he does. And you've got to now step up to the plate of expectation in your faith. Your faith has got to get you there. That's what got him and Joseph there. He never doubted in spite of what he was going through. No matter what season. No, I'm in a season of prison. Okay, I'm a prisoner right now. Praise God. The, the Lord was with him in prison. He made lemonade in prison. When he was in the pit, I'm sure he looked up to God and made lemonade in the pit. When he was a slave in Potiphar's house, lemonade. I'm going to make the best out of this. God's with me. Okay, I'm going to show you what I can do in this situation. So you must apply yourself. Don't think someone's just trying to get something from you when you come to God. When you start dealing with this right here, this is, this is showing you how to fly. None of your family is flying. It's going to teach you how to do something that you ain't never seen before, that you ain't never experienced before. You just got to do it. It's not going to be comfortable. This walk with God is not comfortable. It ain't comfortable. It's not for the weak. It's not for the weary. It's for the brave. Bow your heads. Our Father, our God, we thank you. On this night, we thank you that you are the dream maker. God, you've given all of us a here dreams, visions. And you said, Lord God, in your word, in the last days... You shall pour out your spirit upon all flesh. And our sons, our daughters, they shall prophesy. For you said the young men shall see visions and the old shall dream dreams. Father God, the dreams in this house, I speak it now over this house. And Father, as I sat with my pastor on yesterday, Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that you're canceling the spirit of sabotage. Lord, I speak now over this house. I speak now over every disciple, over everyone under the sound of my voice. Every spirit of sabotage that has tried to hold back the dreams of your people, that tried to hinder, that tried to delay, and tried to deny the visions of this house, the visions of your people. I command right now that those strings be cut, 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 cut. I command every string, every cord, every fetter, every, hear me, every form of shackle be broken now off of the life of your people I speak dream now dreams to come alive I speak dreams to manifest I speak resources to come for dreams to be real in this house and father we thank you now by putting our hands together and saying amen come on if you believe it we decree it tonight and it is so in Jesus name